Okay, good day everyone. Um, this is Mario, back from a long sabbatical. I've been in school, um, I've been getting my degree in accounting. I have a degree already in English literature and um, I've gotten some great comments from a few people on YouTube and that's just really awesome that people are finding this valuable and enjoying this so it just really makes my day. I want you to know that. And um, so we're back here. I've got some more time on my hands, um, thankfully now, and hopefully I'll be getting a job soon <laughs> as an accountant. And so, um, but let's get into Thoreau. I, I was, of course, I've been reading and doing all kinds of things as well. In fact, I read all of Moby Dick um, since we've last spoken and I've last posted here. And I just love that novel. I would love to do a full reading of that as well. But nonetheless, let's talk about Thoreau. I read the chapter on reading. Ah, here, let me see here. I don't want to talk about these comments. This might, uh, didn't really research this fully or test this out yet, but, um, I read the chapter on reading again, and let's see here, let's see if we can just maybe zoom in here, that will help, won't it? Uh, here we go. So, I reread the chapter on reading, I don't want to focus on this, his, this guy's comments. I'm trying to get this rid of rid of this here. Um, so, I reread the chapter of reading. Let's focus here now. Here's the text. These are the comments of this guy. Um, not too interested in the comments right now of this other guy. But um, this is probably one of the most riveting chapters for me. I mean, there is just so much in this that he just really jam-packs, um, you know, every sentence. This whole chapter is really jam-packed. I just want to go to the top here, though, and, 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 and do, um, say, just a quick thing here. Um, you know what? No, I don't even want to do that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm jumping all around. Let's just get right into the text here, okay? So, I'm jumping ahead, you know... Um, we're skipping, I'm just going to do like a little chapter here on reading and talk a bit about what Thoreau has to say about that. So bear with me, we will go back to the beginning of Walden and go through it, you know, kind of sort of chapter by chapter, but I just want to put this chapter out here because it was just so riveting for me and inspirational to read. So this is a chapter on reading and his chapters, Thoreau constructs Walden in a way where the chapters um, they, they bounce off each other. So the first chapter is on economy, and then the next chapter is on, ooh, let me see what it is. The next chapter, uh, notes on Walden, uh, here we go. Yeah, the next chapter is where I lived and what I lived for, and then the next chapter is reading, and then sounds, and then solitude, and then visitors, the bean field, the village, ponds, baker farm, brute neighbors, higher laws, housewarming, and on it goes. But generally speaking, there's a sort of a pattern with the chapters where it goes interior, exterior, interior, exterior, interior, exterior interior, exterior. So focusing on his internal process and then focusing on his the people outside of him. So the, the text itself has a structure. And so where are we with reading? Reading is one of the interior structures. So it's a focus on his internal consciousness. And so with that in mind, let's, let's, let's read this. Let's just start reading because it is really beautiful. So Okay, with a little more deliberation, just a quick note already, deliberation is a huge part of Walden Pond, one of the most famous lines, um, and let's see if we can just pull it up, uh, to live deliberately, here, 
brought up a quote already. This is probably one of the most famous lines. I went to the woods because I wanted to live deliberately. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to put, to rout all that was not life, and not when I had come to die, discover that I had not lived. So that is from Walden Pond. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where. <laughs> I think it's in uh, for what I lived, what I lived for, and, and, and why. The second chapter. But to live deliberately. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to put to rout all that was not life, and not when I had come to die discover that I had not lived. So it's this process of living deliberately that is a huge part of what Walden Pond is all about. It's a conscious life, living consciously, living alive. And we hear about that in the beginning. We were talking about that with... Well, actually, maybe not in the beginning. There, there's a chapter where he talks about a flute being played. And he... It's the sound of a flute that's kind of like waking up his neighbors. Um, he's talking metaphorically. I don't know if he's talking literally. Although, I did learn, which I had not known, from one of the people that befriended me on the YouTube channel. She's got a video up of Thoreau. He played a flute. I didn't know that. I play a flute. <laughs> so I love that. Um, but let's get back to this. So deliberation. With a little more deliberation, a little more deliberation in their choice of their pursuits. Okay, so right there, boom, we've already got living life more deliberately. Choosing how you want to allocate your time. All men would perhaps become essentially students and observers, for certainly their nature and destiny are interesting to all alike. Interesting lines, would you not say? In accumulating property for ourselves or our posterity, Occupy Wall Street, in founding a family or a state, Greece, or acquiring fame even, Kim Kardashian, <laughs> we are mortal. So that's like, all of this stuff in this world, it's all going to go away. And that's biblical. He's preaching to us in a sense. But in dealing with truth, we are immortal and need fear no change nor accident. Powerful, powerful statements. Let's just quickly take this back here. So he's connecting up truth, dealing with truth, whoops, dealing with truth as related to becoming students and observers. For certainly their nature and destiny are interesting to all alike. So, part of dealing with truth is a process of being a student. So I'm liking that to being humbled, being uh, available, open to learning something new. So you don't have all the answers. And to observing. So you're a scientist, in a way. And this is what Walden Pond is. I've often said that Walden Pond is like a documentary before video cameras came around. You know, you would see, you could see Walden Pond on PBS, you know, or National Geographic or something like that. It's, it's, it's that kind of a medium. And he's really observing his world. In fact, the natural, the, he was in, uh, Honored with uh, a uh, honorary, you know, invitation to the Naturalist Society or something like that. He declined it apparently, but nonetheless, he was honored with that. So, observation and willingness to learn and humility. Okay, that's how we deal with truth, and in that we become immortal. Now, if you know anything about Shakespeare, Shakespeare talks about immortality in his sonnets. And we 